using Metasploit capture modules, this time on Metasploit Minute. Metasploit Minute is brought to you by viewers like you. If you get value from this show and you can spare even a dollar or change, please consider contributing at metasploitminute.com. Welcome to Metasploit Minute, the breakdown on breaking in. I'm your host, Rob Fuller, but you can call me Mubix. This time we're gonna be going over Metasploit capture modules. Now this is a subset of modules that are particularly interesting because what you do with these capture modules is you capture incoming things of all different types. And the one in particular that we're gonna be going over is the HTTP basic capture module. So this, what this module does is it receives um, HTTP requests and then says, hey, you need to authenticate um, using basic auth and then the web uh, browser or whatever you have you um, then authenticates. So we're going to set up this module real quick. Use aux server capture and this is where all the capture modules are. So if you hit tab, you'll see all, all the ones that are in there. So the one we're going to be using is HTTP basic. So options and you can see that you can set the realm, the server host, the serve port, SSL, SSL cert, you can even make it have a, a valid certificate, the URI path, and that's pretty much it. The awesome thing about these capture modules is if they capture credentials, they actually put them in the database. All right, so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna set up this, this capture module to say serve host is already good, um, serve port is 443, because we want this over SSL, make these this basic auth a little bit better, a little more secure. Set SSL to true. Set our URI path. This is where someone will go to authenticate. So if we don't put a URI path in there, if we don't set anything, it's gonna be random. And while that's great um, for some instances, um, what we want to do is, is make, it, um, make it specific so it's, very, it's really easy to type. So if you want to do random, it'll only require authentication on that random URL. All other URLs, it won't. So if you want to be a little stealthy, you can make it random um, unless you're having someone actually type it in. So in this case, we're just going to make it easy. And it's going to be in slash. So we're going to show our options again just to make sure that we have everything correct. And realm secure site is just fine. We have SSL going and we type run. That's it. We have our capture module set up. So what we're going to do next is we're going to swap over to the um, uh, now what, yeah, instead, we're going to just show this on, on our local box. So we open up our, our web browser just to make sure we have everything going. HTTPS 172.16.102.137, I believe. 137. Okay. That didn't work. HTTPS. There we go. That was port 80. This is so. Add exception, yes, we're good. Now it's requiring secure site authentication. So we're gonna type Bob test, try this out. And you can see that it tried a couple times with Bob test. Great, now we have everything set up. So how do we make this actually useful? Like how do, how do we use it in the field? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a little bit of PowerShell Kung Fuery that I found in the Red Team Field Manual. Um, I think Carlos Perez actually originally um, made this, this post about how to do things. Um, he has a bunch of other great PowerShell things that you can check out on his website. Um, so I've already typed this out and I'm gonna make this a little bit larger just so you guys can see it easier. So we have, the first thing is we, we and this is all PowerShell, this is um, not Metasploit. So we, we have a cred variable that says get credential, it says fail, failed authentication. Um, it says, don't look at the server certificate. Um, so with PowerShell, it automatically verifies the server certificate um, and won't let you go to things automatically without a valid cert. And since we're using um, a generated cert using Metasploit, this is not gonna be valid. We make a new object called web client. We tell it, use all the proxy settings and credentials that the proxy for this setup has. Um, and then we use those credentials. We literally use the credentials that are gonna be in this pop-up against ourselves. So let's see how this works. Um, first, what we have to do for anything to happen is we have to convert it into something that we can use on a, on a Windows desktop. Now, you could put this over as a file on the Windows desktop and then change the 
the permissions for PowerShell, so it doesn't require signing of, of PowerShell, but that's a lot of work. This we can do a little bit easier. We can cat our bad, uh, or I think it's pop-up. Or did I save that as? Evil pop-up. So we cat our evil pop-up, and we, and we can convert using icon V. This changes it from, um, a, uh, I forget the encoding that it is by default, but changes for the, from the default encoding over to um, UTF-16LE. And you can see it still looks the exact same. Nothing's changed other than the encoding. And then we're going to base64 it. And this specific encoding is what PowerShell requires when, when it's using an encoded command. And I'll show you how that works in a second. So we tell it to base64. We copy all of this over to our Windows box. And you can see that this this is the um, get credential method for PowerShell. So we're just going to type in PowerShell just directly to our command prompt. Paste this in. Long command. Hit enter. Now, if we were doing this in the background, we could, we could hide that wallpaper or that, that, uh, that command prompt. And you can see that it says failed authentication, just like we had. Enter your credentials, OK. The, and it automatically populates the username. So of whatever user we're executing as, and it's Bob. So let's, let's say my password is, this is a really long password. You could never guess. Enter. So there's, a, there's a, uh, one little error that it doesn't come back as anything. And that's because it's actually authenticating but not getting anything back. Again, you wouldn't see that if you were doing this in the background. We go over to our basic auth um, capture module, and there we go. We see that the domain that this computer is, log, uh, is logged into is Win7-64dev, uh, and that's actually the computer name. So if it's not attached to a domain, it actually uses the computer name automatically, the username, and this is the really long password you'd never guess. And a great thing about this is we go into our creds database. Oh, it didn't store it. It should. Well, that's a bug request or a bug finding we're going to have to submit. But normally, this request would directly go into the credential database, um, and we could see it in here. That's it. So what do you, tell me what you think. Email at msf at hack5.org, and stay tuned to metasploitminute.com for more shows like these. And a huge thanks to everyone who supported the show directly. You can find ways to donate or get awesome Metasploit swag, merchandise, all kinds of things at metasploitminute.com. Every dollar goes towards making this show just for you. And for that, I'm deeply grateful. So until next time, I'm Mubix, and I'll be hacking till the cows come home. Um, as well. Blah, I went into HTTP capture modules. I didn't say capture modules. Eh. Hey there. Yeah, you. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate all the awesome feedback and support we've received from viewers exactly like you. Well, not as cool, but you, know, you get the gist. If you haven't already checked it out, you could really help if you go over to the, our Patreon and support the show directly. If you can't, that's cool. Simple like or subscribe goes a long way too. Either way, thanks for watching. We'll talk later, man. Take it easy.